um, I just roll right into it so that uh, you know, we don't. There's no hard into it. Just, you know, roll right into it. You, oh, you, you have a you have a podcast. So what uh, what other podcasts are, are you listening to these days? Well, at the moment, I I haven't got time to listen to anything. You know, no. no. I, I think by the time I get home, I just you know, I am. I am in a vegetative state. <laughs> so I think probably <laughs> watching Narcos on Netflix is about as good as it gets. Yeah. Nar- really Narcos? Yeah, I'm absolutely into Narcos. I think it's the most fantastic series, you know. Is it? Yeah. It's, you know, it's I, I've been, I've been tempted to watch that. I just, I, I haven't, uh, you yeah, know. It I've is, it is great. This whole, you know, the whole, um, uh, you know, the Colombian thing, the whole, it's, you know, because it's so close. Yeah. You know, it's literally just a few hundred miles away that this stuff was happening. Oh, it, 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 are you, are you, um, uh, is it kind of like what was that that Johnny Depp movie? Um, Not Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, the one that where he was with Penelope Penelope Cruz and they did that uh, uh, yeah, uh, drug. Well, yeah, I know thing. it was a bit like that, but it's yeah. no, no. Narcos is the whole story of oh God. What is the name of the guy? The uh, you know the, the huge drug dealer. Oh, um, uh, Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar. Oh, so it's set back in that time. It's like that whole 80s, story of of eighties uh, and then and how he was yeah. captured and how the DEA were trying to capture him and you know all that sort of thing. So wow. Um, check one two. Uh, yeah. So um, I I'm, I've been getting into uh, Glow. Have you watched Glow yet? No. Oh, with uh with uh, Mark Maron and uh, that one's really good. Yes. Well, yeah. once you know, you know you get home and you spend half the night searching through Netflix for something to watch. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you don't even realize it. You, you're spending. Yeah. You're you're just sitting there going click. Click. Yeah, proving and, and you, proving it, that it, choice it, is confusion. So in other words, this it is. Know, if I just had one channel, I would know exactly what I was going to watch. Right, so, and that would you know. But yeah, I feel almost I get to the end of the night feeling cheated that that I burnt all this time trying an to choose hour something. Hour and a half looking to watch a thirty minute show, and my wife has left me at that point, and my children, you know, so. <laughs> Dad, come yeah. on, <laughs> hang on, just two more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I get mesmerized sometimes. I don't even realize that I'm just I'm flipping. Yeah. You know, and then I'm thinking about something else, and I'm like, "Oh, wait a minute! I'm I'm looking for a show that to watch." That is here. the show. The the show <laughs> yeah, is, the is show searching is the, a show. Yeah, exactly. I I know. Um, and then you do you binge? Do you binge watch? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the last major binge was, um, I think it was Narcos, or it might have been, um, I can't I can't remember. It's it's the uh, the yeah I can't remember. Yeah. But you have to. Do, I think we binged it on a. It was a wet weekend. I think we did two series. Uh, and I think that probably counts as actually having a significant problem. So there's probably counselling you can get yeah, for that. I, yeah. Ray Donovan. That was it. Was two oh, series of Ray Donovan. Two two seasons of Ray. Two Donovan? seasons of Ray. Two Donovan. seasons. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a that's a tough one, man. And I, then the following two weeks was this terrible come down effect that you know we have nothing <laughs> left to watch and you know so. You feel that that sense of like a loss. Loss. Absolutely. It's like when yeah. Breaking Bad finished. It's like, well, that's it. What is there left? And you just to stand do? there, like, with your mouth open, like, that's. I've just done it. I've just, I've just eaten my last Swedish fish. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, so, uh, what? How long have you been? Uh, you been out here in the in the U.S. Four years, just over four years. Yeah. And it was. Um, it's always been here in Newport. Yeah, yeah. Well, I live about twenty minutes inland, so it's always been Southern California. Okay. Um. So I. Um, yeah, I, I uh, came over here, nothing to do with the weather. Obviously, I, you know, love the rain in England. Um, but yeah. no, it was just this combination of, uh, I think, a significant, uh, you know, just all the opportunities over here, plus where I was in my life at that time, it just all sort of seemed to make sense. Yeah. Um, and, and, and when it was raining, was it like, uh, do you miss the rain? I, you miss I miss the, the rain until it rains, and then I, then I don't miss it anymore. So... <laughs> You don't and, miss it anymore. You know, and, and, and I'm okay with not having seasons, by the way. Yeah, you like the one season that we have here? Yeah, that's, it's uh, different grades of sunshine. Yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, this is why there's overcrowding in California season. I, and the thing I love is when it's, it's now fall, apparently, because it's now like 85 degrees rather than 90 that's degrees. Same. So therefore, that qualifies as being fall. So and winter is 78 degrees, you know, and, and people, how do you go out and it's so cold? How do you live in that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, uh, I I talk to people, you, and you know, being in the in this world that we're in now, you know, you you end up talking to people all around the world. Yes. Yeah, I talked to somebody that uh, was uh, just in Australia, and uh, it's apparently winter. 
in Australia. But that's the wrong time of year. So clearly they'd got that wrong. Yeah. Bad planning, Australians, you know, <laughs> having <laughs> Christmas in the middle of summer, you know. Yeah. That, did that you not get do. the memo? Come uh-huh. on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, so you you, uh, you you cruised out here. Were you always in, in tech? Is this like a... Yeah, I mean, I've worked for myself for the last 25 plus years. Yeah. Um, and I've, yeah, I've always been fascinated by tech. I've always, I mean, my first sort of major tech outing was in the late 90s when we built this billing platform for the internet. So back in 97, 98. A billing platform. A billing platform, because okay. the internet was really very much in its early phases. And if you can imagine the amount of data that's flowing around, people weren't able to charge for that other than by the month. So you could have, you, you had all of these, um, you know, eat, eat, eat as much as you like for, for $10 a month. And there was tons of data. Um, so we we took some top people out of Unisys and NTL and all those companies that were big players at the time, yeah. and we started building um, what was a very large billing system that enabled us to check the packets that are flowing through the internet. Oh, really? And charge by the packet or charge by the the byte, or and we would be able to separate what sort of information was flowing. So if it was content, we could charge it at a certain rate. If if it was voice, it was another rate. This is very early stages. Wow. Um, okay. So we were one of we were you know VC funded, and then unfortunately we, you know, the timing was as such. So as we were just getting our momentum, uh, you know, the world collapsed around our ears, figuratively and you know, and literally. Oh. Um, yeah. But that's yeah. So I've always been involved in in tech and finance. Those are the two areas that, that I think there's this fantastic sort of marriage, um, or, or certainly um, you know partnership potential. Yeah, and, and and finance is always gonna gonna be wherever the wherever there's money, you gotta you gotta worry about finance and and uh, or where, wherever there's tech, there's yes. gonna be people making money on it. And but uh, but finance, the, the thing that really interested me interests me more than anything else is just the, uh, it, it's the approach. In other words, if you look at you know finance to the average guy in the street is about you know dollars and cents and banking and debit cards and credit cards, but just the mechanics or the science of finance. You know how money moves around, um, what the systems and the processes that are in place, then the different types of financial instruments, the synthetics, the derivatives, the securities, how ownership changes, how value changes. So that the, the actual infrastructure of finance is incredibly interesting. Wow. Okay. Um, w- w- is your, was your family always involved in this? Or my is this father. Just yeah, you my did? father was um, one of the very early uh, senior executives in a merchant bank. So he was the managing director of Manufacturers Hanover, um, which was a, an American firm, but they had an office in London. And when I was a kid, I always was trying to figure out what a Hanover was. And and I had, well, well because the company was Manufacturers Hanover. So I'm, I, I had this visualization when I was about seven years old that my dad would go to work in a factory and they would manufacture Hanovers. Yeah. And I was just asking my mom, you know, so what is a Hanover? And it's like, no, no, you don't understand. It's just a name. And I, so my dad doesn't work in a factory. No, no, he works in a bank. Because it's amazing, just the words. I just you, didn't. Yeah, when you're a little kid, you, 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 you're you trying to associate a, a word yeah. with, a, with an object, I guess, right? That's going to work, and he's manufacturing these things, and he's, <laughs> a, you know, they're Hanovers. And, anyway. Yeah, it's like Cosworth's Cogs. Exactly, yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> yes. so anyway, so, so I, was, I was relieved of that, uh, you know, this, that uh, misinformation at an early age. Okay, and so he got you uh, involved? But, no, but he was always involved. So I, I, you know, I was always interested. So when he was... Um, he would take me up to the trading floor. So I was probably about 10 or 12. So at the exchange? Uh, at, well, it was in the bank. So they had these bond trading desks. Oh, okay. Um, and they had these squawk boxes. And the squawk boxes where you have this live communication between London and New York. So they're constantly talking to each other. Uh, it's it's, it's wow. a bit like the modern day of having a, a, you know, a Skype conversation that's constantly open. Okay. But I think those... Those were significantly more expensive then, I think. But and well, that's kind of the advanced. Buzz, the, so I didn't the, even know that existed. Yeah, and we had rolls and reams and reams of telex sheets hanging on the walls, and you know, the computers the size of 
family sedans, yeah. and, you know, that sort of thing. So, <laughs> did it have like the reel to reel? Not quite. No, I was, no. I was, I felt a bit cheated actually. I was hoping to see that, but no, yeah. I just that was probably yeah. the yeah. secret room. No, okay. I just, I just saw the, you know, the <laughs> literally, you know, reams and reams of sort of telexes just pinned up against the wall. Wow. And uh, and that was how business was done, and that was yeah. that was I don't know probably forty years ago, something like that. Wow! And how things have changed, haven't they? Yeah, everything that you that would would take up an entire room uh, size computer now fits in basically in the palm of your hand. Exactly. Right. Your iPhone has more power than the that whole. And, that, room. and that's that's absolutely true. Just yeah. you know, in terms of um, how how it's, but also the the speed and the ability for transactions to happen, the depth of transactions, the. It's the speed of transactions and, and 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 just the number you know the the different types of transactions the because if you think about a transaction you know in the analog world there would be a telex that would go backwards and forwards the telex would be ripped off the machine would go to a, a secretary the secretary would enter that into a journal the journal may be computerized you know there was no instantaneous settlements that's yep. why we have T plus three, T plus seven, T plus 30, because it gives you enough time to find the bits of paper that you yeah. need to settle the trades. Wow, all right. Um, and then uh, the, the tech part of it, the tech, uh, you know, is it? Tech is building, so te tech is really, it's like a very large Lego kit, mm -hmm. where you say, well, this is the problem that we've got to solve. How do you, how do you create instructions that it's like you have this concept and tech or software is a frame that you put around that. Because to write proper software, you have to understand the rules because software is really just a set of instructions. Um, and w what it does is it means that you have to look at your, the particular problem and say, well, what, is the, what are the components that make this up? A simple transaction, for example, is not a simple transaction because yeah. things have to happen in order for that transaction to take place. And um, so the tech piece is really, um, what is the, uh, the, 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 the sort of metaphysical um, uh, way of representing a transaction? In other words, you take a transaction, how do you break it down into its components? How do you codify that? How do you make a machine that does that transaction, that takes that process? Okay. Um, and really, um, and again, that from a, an intellectual perspective is in, is incredibly interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. And w would you, was your dad in, into any kind of tech at all? No. It, no? I, well, I think um, probably not. No. I think the tech. I think when I was at school, I remember we had this computer. Um, so I was. I'm talking about 1977, something like that. So the first exposure I had to a computer, we had a um, one of those sort of teletype things connected to a modem the modem was the size of a, a briefcase so and it had to be after three o'clock in the afternoon <coughs> so at three o'clock 301 we'd go up to the computer room we would dial up the central computer you know i can't remember where it was and we would put this acoustic coupler in which is old sort of phone and and you'd hear the sounds of the modem yeah. and then this teletype would spring into life and we would write programs using basic <coughs> excuse me um the basic computer language yeah. um, on this teletype. And it would be programs like Hammurabi, or we would have um, Space Invaders, where the, oh, yes. where, where the sort of, you know, the Space Invaders would actually, mm -hmm. you know, be teletyped onto this piece of paper. Yeah. Um, and the way that you would save your program is you would press a button and it would be spat out as a paper tape. So in my study at school, I had all these different programs saved on punched paper. Isn't that crazy? I, I think things have improved slightly since then. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's so you get that that whole it, it becomes part of your fabric, part of your being. That sort of, you know, that that interest in in, in computers and data and information and um, all that sort of stuff. So I've been fascinated with that really since a very young age. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, you know, we, we're, I think we're we're probably pretty close to the same age. So were you exposed to like the TRS eighty? Uh, yeah. Well, before that, I remember the first computer was the NASCOM one, wow. which was a kit. So um, I wasn't, I didn't do it, but I wasn't smart enough, I don't think, but there were some kids at school who were busy building these computers, little computers the size of a keyboard called a NASCOM one. And then we had the, um, the Sinclair ZX81 
and then we had the Commodore PET. Oh yeah. Um, and then Commodore. we had the 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 great games consoles, the Acorn, the BBC Acorn, and then the Atari, the supercomputer, the yes. Atari. Um, yeah. You know, so I remember all of that and the Commodore sixty four. This, you know, and you just think that's just such an amazing piece of science. There, look at it now. You just think, you know, <laughs> I think there's more technology in a toaster, frankly. I, I, I think there is. Yes. <laughs> well, and um, so you you decided to. Uh, w w first of all, let's go into quantum re. Yes. And um, uh, I, I, I forget the guy's name that that connected us. Um, uh, yes, John Livesey. Um, Dog on it, man. We're gonna have to cut this part out. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's gonna be the long super pause, embarrassing. Yes, yes. yes. yeah, yes. That, that guy that connected us. So um, he, you know, he said that that uh, I needed to meet you because yes. you uh, you got some pretty crazy stuff going on. Clayton or Sean or um, my gosh, I can't believe. We'll it. find it. Don't worry. We'll yeah, cut that yeah. Bit, we'll yeah. We'll <laughs> cut, cut that in. Notes to editor. Yeah. Um, so. This is something that uh, he he felt was very important, and I guess they 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 they, they handle a lot of uh, tech. Yes, uh, you know, block blockchain tech type yes. of stuff. Okay, so what was your first exposure to 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 blockchain type of, um, or was it Bitcoin? What, what was yeah, your it thing? was. No, we're we're part of. Well, I'm a member of a, a networking group. So when I moved here four years ago. I needed to go and meet some people because I had, you know, very few contacts over here. Yeah. So I joined this group called Metal. Um, Metal? As in M-E-T-A-L. Okay, um, Metal, right. Which is based in uh, Beverly Hills. And it's this fantastic group where y we meet every Saturday, um, set up and uh, founded by a chap called Ken Rotowski, who ran the Business Rockstars radio station and uh, a super connector. Wow. And every Saturday we would meet in a, or we do, we meet in a, uh, theater and we have one or two mini TED style talks um, and then we just you know catch up with some really smart people and there's okay. people from all walks of life they're they're all top of the tree one of the guys is Nolan Bushnell who was the founder of Atari oh so, wow. he, so he's there sort of sitting next to me and yeah. one of the other guys is Brock Pierce now Brock Pierce Get out really who's the right. chairman of uh, Bitcoin Foundation I think or was yeah. um, Three or four years ago, he's up on stage and he's talking about Bitcoin. And I was sort of scratching our heads, going, um, "Yeah, interesting." I'm not sure. Have you heard, had you heard about Bitcoin before? Well, then? no, no. This was the first. I think I came across it in London. I remember reading about Mount Gox, but not understanding what it meant. Okay. So I remember reading that news. It was about four or five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. And just really just not getting it, not understanding it. Um, and then I went to a few conferences and I listened to Tim Draper talking about the blockchain. And me, like everybody else, we sort of sat in the audience and Googled blockchain and the words <laughs> distributed <laughs> ledger comes up. And we're going, obviously, I've just Googled the wrong blockchain because, yeah. you know, what's interesting about that? Um, so it, it took me a while to actually figure out, you know, and... By figuring out, you, you tend to sort of look at a curve that's pointing upwards like the side of Mount Everest, and you realize that one should actually be paying attention to this because obviously there's a lot of interest there. Yeah. Um, so it was about 18, about a year ago, in fact, um, after much head scratching, thinking, I don't understand what Bitcoin is. Um, I'm beginning to understand what blockchain means and distributed le ledger technologies and the value of that but the real problem i have with bitcoin is i don't understand what it's based on is it is, you know is it based on the network effect or more buyers and sellers so that to me just seems incredibly um, volatile because if you've got something that has no real value how do you you know, how do you value it? So I'm not interested in being an investor because I know the moment I put my money in, it's going to collapse because that's 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 what yes. happens to all of my investments. Yes, I know. Yeah. So it was. It was about a year, a year and a half ago. No, probably about three years ago. I was first exposed. It okay. took me about two years to actually figure out that this is something that I needed to get involved with. Did Did, did you know about the uh, yeah, how it it started off in 2009 yeah, and, that, and that, that it was point, yeah. zero value? Exactly. And it just started sort of climbing. And then, but if you look at the why it's got this value, I mean, the thing is, it's not so much about the fact it's clearly great that it's gone from zero to, you know, $8,000 or whatever it is today yeah. and up yeah. to $20,000. But again, that's, that's a bubble, basically. You know, in other words, that has all the signs of a bubble if you don't have any real 
value associated with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that Bitcoin's a bubble. I'm just saying that seeing something accelerate in value. That's a, a visual bubble. Yeah. That is, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and that, that has all the signs. So, so th what you have to do is actually go back and say, well, this is interesting. It's worth paying attention to. Um, but what is it actually made of? Um, you know, what are the ingredients? What makes it? What makes people buy this? Yeah. Um, and that's really what hit the headline. So the, the rise in Bitcoin is what brought blockchain onto the map. Um, mm -hmm. So it was the cryptocurrency element of it that, that hit the headlines because everybody yeah. felt that they could become a millionaire overnight. This is the next big thing. Um, and having been burnt so many times in the past with my you know, inability to you know, predict. Well, the trouble with investing speculative, speculative you know, yeah. in a speculative way, if one can pronounce it, is that it's speculative. In other words, you have just as much chance of losing money <laughs> as you do. Of it's walking up to a slot machine and exactly. putting a quarter in and going, I'm probably not going to get that back. But I, but I, want, I knew that there was obviously something of value there. So um, when I moved over here four years ago, the first thing I did was to set up a real estate crowdfunding company. So I had experience over the last four years in dealing in securities laws, real estate, crowdfunding, chopping real estate up into small pieces and okay. using the crowdfunding mechanism. Um, and one throwaway comment, I remember as I was leaving the, the, uh, um, you know, the, the cinema, the theatre one particular Saturday to someone was, wouldn't it be great if we could create a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin but is based on physical assets? And then I'm sort of scratching my head as I'm driving home thinking that would actually solve the problem because if you can reduce that volatility, if you can create something of intrinsic value behind Bitcoin, then you have all the really good things about Bitcoin, which is its ability to be traded nationally and internationally, you know, in a, in a millisecond. Yeah. Um, but you remove all the bad stuff, which is that volatility, because people know that the coin is actually backed by something in the same way that the dollar was backed by gold. Was, yeah. Why not create, and yeah. yeah and the, <laughs> but there's a lot of real estate. There's a lot more yeah. real estate than there was gold. Yeah. Um, so why not, create a mechanism to create a currency that's backed by real estate. And that's really what quantum RE is all about. Is it? Okay. All right. And then we thought, what real estate asset class should we use? Um, and something we looked at about four years ago was um, buying the equity in people's homes. Now, the real problem is if you're a homeowner, if you're sitting on equity, the only way you can tap into that is by going back to the bank and borrowing more money. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, I've got this asset. I've got half a million dollars worth of equity in my home. How do I get hold of it? You go back to the bank and say, can I please borrow some of your money so that I can get access to mine? And then you have to go through this whole process of filling in forms and do you qualify? And, yeah. and if you're a senior without a job and without income, you know, I'm really sorry you don't yeah. qualify. But I've got half a million dollars worth of assets there. Well, you could think about a reverse mortgage, but that's a little bit predatory, possibly. Um, and so what we do is we buy a percentage of the equity in your home. So we write you a check and say, you know, we don't own that piece. You still live there. But when you sell your home, then you give us the money back. And also, if your house goes up in value, then we have a piece of that appreciation as well. Oh, really? Okay. So we share in the future appreciation of your home. Okay. So we take those assets, and that's the thing that we use to back our real estate back token. Wow. Now, what what if that happens in reverse? What if the what if the market starts? starts well, that's that's the risk. So we're partners with the homeowner. So what we say is, unlike a bank where they get the money come rain or shine. Yes, they do. What yeah. we say is, we, imagine we're like a silent partner. So if the house goes down in value, then we run the risk that our investment may not give the returns that we want. And we have to be very careful about how we underwrite. Um, but if we pick the right properties in the okay. right places and we underwrite the people, we should find the right houses. And we can also hedge by buying all sorts of instruments so that the overall pool of assets is protected because it's diversified and there are hedging mechanisms in place yeah. so that it so that we don't run the risk of you know the value collapsing overnight and real estate doesn't do that anyway okay all right um and, and is this a primarily uh, like single family home type of thing or can you do it's single family homes because okay. the message is you know if you're a homeowner um and you want to release your equity then 
what our platform does is it harnesses blockchain technologies <laughs> now that we've yeah. figured out what they are. So you, by creating this token, you create something that is useful on a mass market basis. So if people want to pay for things using cryptocurrency, then we think they'll use our currency because they know that next month it's not going to collapse in value. Yes. Um, and um, Just got a phone call. <laughs> something, oh, you did, yes. <laughs> I think that was you. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was a little guy popped up on your screen there. Um, okay, so and, and, uh, where, how are people, how do people uh, find out about this? Well, we are um, building this platform. So what you see here is a, um, a platform that is going to be going live in about 10 days' time. Okay. Um, so we've been spending the last year building these technologies out. Okay. Um, we won't be going public public really until the beginning of next year because okay. there's a lot of you know sort of uh, uh, regulatory hoops we have to yeah, jump through and we do, our team has yeah. huge amounts of experience in precisely this asset class and yeah. um, so they've originated over you know hundreds of millions of dollars worth of these types of transactions in the past um but yeah i mean to, to uh you know, just check out the website it's quantumre.com dot com um, okay. and you'll see this and you'll see um, some more information on top of it okay Um, <laughs> and uh, do you you obviously have a big team or a team with yes. you? And yes. are, they, are they here? Yeah, they're all they're all US based. All so US we have based. A, a team primarily based in in LA in Southern California. Oh, in LA. All um, right. So we have a team of um, uh, a technical team. Um, we have an executive management team. Um, we have overall a team of around thirty people, and that's a combination of technology, legal, regulatory, finance, sales, marketing. Um, so we're a fully formed company, um, right. and really we're building the platform. So we will be going live. I think probably first quarter next year okay. um, is when we'll be able to start helping people release their equity, and at the same time, probably second half of next year, we'll be able to start, um, you know, creating these uh, cryptocurrencies that are backed by those real estate assets. Okay. Did, did you guys do uh, any any kind of um, like a, a tour? You know, the, these these crypto. Uh, conferences. Um, are you guys getting involved with that? Did you do? Yeah, that? I mean, we're we're in. Um, we start our fundraising. Uh, so we we raised um, just under two million dollars in seed capital earlier earlier this year. Okay. Um, so we're going back to the market in November um, to raise some capital through um, through an ICO, um, and that'll be out of um, BlockX in the United Kingdom. So that's a, a capital raise that's. Um, uh, directed to non-US persons for yeah. sort of regulatory purposes. But we also have a US persons raise as well. So we're having to do it in two sort really? of two areas. How does that how does that work for the US? Uh, for US what we do is we use um, the um, standard securities um, uh, exemptions, which is regulation D. Um, okay. So we we you know we work very much hand in hand with the regulators um, and um, you know we are you know issuing our tokens under a regulation D exemption. Okay. Do you see um, more more education towards the SEC as yes. far as what uh, what's yeah, you know? and and that's something we absolutely welcome because I mean the SEC have been fabulous. They've been so have they? Yeah, no, no, okay. absolutely because they've been. You hear, you hear nightmare nightmare stories. No, you know, I, but uh, no, no, they, they could. They must be getting better. They have sent so many um, not warning signals, but messages out to the market saying, you know, hey guys, you know, we're taking a look at this. Followed by, you know, just be careful what you do. There are securities regulations out there. Um, you know, utility tokens issued as securities are securities. So just, you know, guys flagging this up. <laughs> yes. You know, and then there's, you know, you know, the next message is, you know, remember we told you about this? Um, now we're going to, there's a couple of guys out there who are acting fraudulently. So so we're going to pull those guys up and we're going to, you know, make make sure everyone knows that there's, people that are very bad actors in this space so um and the sec from what we understand has a very much an open door policy on this they want to understand how it works and how they can regulate it um and uh, and there are some fantastic fantastically flexible pieces of legislation that came out of the crowdfunding regulations the um uh, the jobs act and uh, that allow you to properly issue tokens okay. that are compliant so so you know we we you know, we we're operating very much within the regulatory framework because yeah. we run a securities business, and we have, in fact, we are um, uh, you know building our own broker dealer. So, so we are we will oh, okay. be a regulated 
you know uh, uh, entity in our own right yeah um yeah it, it just se- it just seems like they they can't get out of their own way i guess as far as what, what rules they have to follow right the sec well, they have to follow their own rules yeah, and then yeah. they want to get further right they want to like be able to yes. make this easier the thing is you know, sec is all about protection you know one has to protect they're protecting yeah they're protecting, protecting investors sides, and and right? you know many investors um uh you know i'm not in favor of the nanny state but you have to make sure that you stop the um the the, the, the it's the fraudulent element is that's the critical thing yeah. it's 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 people that are exposed to um schemes that are clearly clearly fraudulent um where they suffer so that's you, you know the sec's primary objective is to protect the investor public um and you know Generally, people are not sophisticated. The general population is not sophisticated enough to see through no. some of these incredibly complex um, money-making schemes. Yeah, because they they get uh, some some cat with uh, a lot of big words and long paragraphs. Absolutely, and uh, they can just write a bunch of words that don't make any any sense. Yes, and uh, you straighten that out, and then you figure out that's it, and exactly and i don't and um if you look at there are other regimes like china for example which is you know a rather large country with a fair amount of people in it um they have banned icos so the sec has not banned anything they've just said you know you're issuing securities we have rules about that guys yeah you know so um so just you know remember them um so i i'm i'm you know, I, and I know that that uh, uh, my understanding is that Jay Clayton, who's the um, uh, sort of director of the SEC, has very much an open door policy. Yeah. Um, and um, is you know is welcoming this type of um, disruption and change. Yeah. You think they're 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 going to be uh, obviously they're going to be legislating new new, yes. new rules. I don't know. I think there's enough. I, there's enough. It's really just about interpreting the current regulations. I, I don't think there's going to be any need for new regulations because there's enough. There's a huge securities. Um, but changing that so that it makes more sense. Right? Yeah, I think there's that. There's that evolution. But it's really just understanding where cryptocurrencies sit within the current legislation. Because there, there's so much. I mean, you you can't put your thumb thumb on it yet. Well, I think you can in some respects, but there are there are gray areas because it's yeah. about interpretation. So in other words. Different types of tokens. Are they currencies? Are they um, derivatives? Are they securities? Um, are they exchanges? So it's really just understanding where these things fit within the current framework. Yeah. And I think that's the work that's being done at the moment. It's really just understanding what this animal is. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you you guys have, have started the, uh, the ICO... On this the ICO process will start in November. So at the November. moment, so we, we have, you know, we're we're working hard to launch the uh, first phase of the platform, which will be in a couple of weeks, okay. and that will really just be a demonstration of what it's going to look like with some very limited functionality. But um, people will be able to go on and see what we're building, okay. um, and uh, you know, underneath the cryptocurrency and the ability to release money from your home, we're also building this very um, functional trading platform for real estate assets. So you will be oh. able to buy and sell tiny pieces of real estate assets. Oh, can you? Okay. So there's that. There's that sort of third element to, uh, as well. Um, would Would that be something? Let's say, say if I'm I'm here in the U.S. I could buy something in another country. Absolutely, yes. Oh. So, and, so if and you similarly, feel like there's going to be a raise in the uh, in the value of some property somewhere, you can. Yeah, and there will be, and conversely, if you're outside the U.S., you'll be able to come in and buy fractions of specific properties in the U.S. Okay. So rather than buying into a fund, you can actually see these properties on a map, and say, wow. okay, I want you know thousand dollars in that house and two hundred and fifty dollars in that house, and again, all of that is powered by our you know, the, the blockchain technologies. Okay, is there is there going to be like a minimum? That it's small, yeah. I mean, it'll be a thousand dollars. That's that. that's you know the caveat is we're still working on the offering documents. So you know, and the disclaimer is all of this is subject to the offering documents. Yeah. Uh, but it's you know we're targeting those types of uh, smaller investors, and it will have the full protection of being a regulated um, or registered um, offering with the SEC. Okay, so this would be something that even. You know, you could start. It's almost like Monopoly. You can start. Uh, it's funny you say that. Buying a couple of houses, turn exactly. those into hotels. And and again, um, so John Liversay is our um, chief marketing officer, and um, one of the great things that he, ideas he came up with was, you know, what what if you 
create this sort of um, a monopoly effect, exactly, where you yeah. don't actually have to spend real money. You have a virtual currency. It's a bit like, um, uh, you know, when you, you create your own football team, the fantasy football. Yeah, okay. So you can create your own model portfolio where you can say, well, if I had $100,000 and I bought some of that house and some of that house and some of that house, how would it perform? So w we have that process we're oh, building in as good. well. So you could see, uh, theoretically, if you put money into that, what, what you would... Yeah, so that becomes about. almost... Uh, so So John's idea was to, to, to gamify it. So one of the things we'll, we're rolling out later on is oh. an education program okay. based on real assets. So you, and that's also very useful from a for a, an institutional investor who can start using predictive analysis to see where do we think these types of real estate markets are going to move. That's great. So there's, you know, all of, all of that. We're busy working. So we are, we've been rather busy trying to sort of build all of these things out. Yeah. Is that, that's not secret though, right? I mean, no, that's, no, no, that's something all, we can, we can talk about. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Good, it's good, all, it's good. all, it's all. You want to let the cat out of the bag on yeah. that one. All right. Yeah. Cause that sounds fascinating. And that's and it's, it's it'll be in the white paper and um, but it's uh, the thing is one doesn't want to drop too much out because then it looks you know yeah. it looks uh, any risk the the, the the cats out there that are going to try to steal well yeah but, the, but but that's going to happen but when we're you know it's that piece is patented but but you're right exactly it's a big enough market so yeah. what you want is market adoption you want lots of people lots of platforms and and then real okay. estate moves onto the blockchain then it becomes far more liquid and. Okay. Far more tradable. Because I've seen that a lot, you know, because you're you're obviously on on LinkedIn. You just you just yes got your thing, but uh, I, I'm seeing a little bit more now. Like uh, I'll see somebody real estate that are blockchain blah blah blah. Exactly. Yes. They're they're merging. They're 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 coming together it's, with this, and it's happening so fast as well. I mean, yeah. in the last year, we've just seen a massive um, increase in in just activity. I mean, uh, you, you heard of internet time, so blockchain time is like internet time squared you know, you know things happening at a furious rate <laughs> yes it is um so uh, who, who are you who are your biggest partners here right now like uh i mean you, you obviously work with a guy a guy every day or some guys every day that you you talk to and you keep this keep yeah this so we, we have a you know we have a a, a you know a, a full team you know the, you know the chief finance officer chief technical officer um uh, marketing you know, so we have a we have our sort of uh, you know executive group um we have our technical guys that are based in Los Angeles. Um, we have um, other teams in um, that we work with ac across the US. So it's all, th these are all people that work directly for us, but they work from you know, their own their own offices. Or yeah, they don't need homes. to be in, in we're decentralized, right? It, absolutely, we, yeah. yes. We're virtual, well, we're not virtual, we're, we're just, you know. <laughs> we're, yeah. We yeah. just try not to you burn it. it. Yeah. You don't just preach it, but you live it too. Um, so, uh, Wow. Well, this is uh, this is really great stuff, man. Um, and uh, what, what's what's going to be after this? What you know, we, uh, obviously not not the only only game you guys have. Going well, yeah, no. This this is um, um, uh, this is something that I want to build and build and build because there's so much potential here. Yeah. Not this is not a, a single product. This is really we're changing the way that things are, are happening. And, and I don't mean that to be trite in the sense that yeah. you know, but I think. There are so many opportunities to upgrade, change, make more efficient a multi-trillion dollar industry. So there's so many opportunities. And every day there are technical opportunities, legal regulatory opportunities, opportunities in real estate, how it's treated, how it's traded, how it's how it moves from owner to owner, mm -hmm. how that affects the value. So it's really exciting. And it's just going to get more and more interesting and more exciting. So, you know, I'm, I'm here for the long run. Yeah, well, that's great. And then uh, you're obviously going to have uh, some kind of education type program yes. for the people because they don't, not everyone knows what blockchain or that is. Exactly. And so to get them and I think, yeah, and, and all that. of that, it's, it's just such a, the more you understand it, the yeah. easier it is to actually deliver and explain what it is. Yeah. And blockchain is really simple. It's this, it's that, it's not. So we, so part of our, um, part of what we want to do is, is, is educate people, is yeah. explain, take the mystery out of it and say, <clears throat> the reason blockchain is so interesting and so exciting is because it really will fundamentally change the way we do business because of yeah. this. And yeah. this is what I mean by that. So, yeah. all right. Um, I had a question and just fell out of my head. I guess I. We were talking about. Um, uh, oh no, I was gonna. I was gonna talk to you about about your. So you you have a podcast too. Yes. Yeah. And uh, 
What, uh, what, what, no, I'm, you know, what, tell me about what, what you talk about on your podcast. Yeah, so mine's called Hooked on Startups. I started it about a year ago. I've done, okay. I've done 59, 60 episodes. Um, because, uh, I mean, LA is just this hotbed of entrepreneurs. And I just wanted to um, just talk to people and find out what their story was. So there was no... Uh, no sort of, you know, what's the word? not rationale, but there was no <coughs> no agenda. Okay. So it's really just a conversation. And I get, you get, you know, it's like on a podcast, you meet some yeah. of the most amazing people. Yeah. You know, and, and it's all because of, I mean, mine was because I was being taken advantage of on, uh, on other YouTube shows, and I've said this a thousand <laughs> times, but these, these casts that were just doing uh, pump and dumps on their coins. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, t- talking about they were getting paid by these coins to really pump this coin up. Yeah. And you know, they, they seem like such legitimate type shows. Yes. And I kept losing money, you know, yeah. I would jump in right whenever, and then it would just kill out. Yeah, exactly. Everything would fall. Yes. And I couldn't understand it. And then I started realizing these guys are just scamming people. Absolutely. And they're yes. still out there. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, which I, is a real shame. But yeah, I think that happens. Are. And you, you, that happens as part of the natural evolution. You get these sort of these guys are coming in the early stages of any market change. It's, it's mm-hmm. deplorable. It's, it's it awful, is. but, and it will yeah. pass because, and that's where you want the support of the regulators to come in and, and, and just, you know, clamp down on those people. Yeah. They, they really need to, man. Um, and then that, you know, that's why I, like I said, I started this because yes. I wanted to, I wanted to learn myself and I wanted to get the truth out there about what's really going on. The technology Definitely. for the coins. Yes. You know, and there's um, some really interesting technologies that, that um, uh, as I said, I firmly believe that that uh, you know, blockchain and cryptocurrencies over the next f- three to five years will there'll be so many changes, yeah. uh, changes in the way that we do things, changes in the way that we view what money is, what yeah. what agreements are, um, that will just fundamentally change to, you know, to our advantage, yeah, and to our benefit. Yeah. Um, where where are we at right now with the uh, with the amount of bit? I mean, do you do you, are you do you see up with this? Like, a, how many Bitcoin are there right now? I don't know. I don't. I, you know, I don't follow it. Don't to follow it. Okay. Um, right. I mean, I follow it. I follow the the, the, the pricing fluctuations. Okay. But but we we take a much longer term view because we're building something for for next year and the year after. So okay. so right now the sort of the it's, it's sort of fluctuations. It's sort of noise in the background. It's yeah. obviously very important to, to many people, but yeah. to us it's not it's not on our agenda. Okay. So when you when you guide into it, you weren't you. you you're not you're not following i'm not a, a big uh, we've, i've it. never I invested in mind exactly yeah okay all right because i'm trying to figure out myself how many there are right now um as i saw this number the other day and, and it, it just fell out of my head i can't remember if it was 14 million or 17 million and um how, there was only like 20 million right yeah i mean Total? again I've, 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 the, i don't have the figures at hand but i know okay. it's all about constrained supply and demand yeah so because you know, I talk to people every day about this. I did a, I was a, I'm a commercial photographer, and yes. I was doing a shoot yesterday, and I, I always, I always, you know, bringing this up and talking about, uh, you know, they, they're, they've heard about it. Yes. They don't know much about it. They don't know if they should get in or not. And I'm like, absolutely get in, buy as much as you can right now. Yes. It's just gonna keep. It's gonna eventually go up. So I'm trying to explain, you know, how many there are. Yes. And when they're gone, they're gone. Exactly. And uh, you know, then, and then like, you have well, so you can't buy anymore. And I'm like, yeah, you can buy. You, but buy and you have to buy someone else's. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But you're not gonna be able to make anymore. Yes. You know. So um, what uh, you. Can you give me a prediction on what you think? Uh, you know, in in uh, at the end of the year, what it's gonna be. Um, I always ask people this. I, just I, to, I, I do you, know. I, you I think I, I think it's going to be more than it is now. Yeah. Um, and I think really because uh, my view of the market sentiment um, is that uh, it's going through a bear patch at the moment. But I think there is so much. Uh, there are so many high quality operators that will be emerging out of the um, the technology space over the next yeah. twelve months. So that will really underpin the value of cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Um, so that will uh, so so Bitcoin will be a reflection of that. So you know I think it will be more than it is now. I, I have no idea what the n- the number is, but I, th- I mean, the long term, uh, f- uh, my long term view of cryptos and Bitcoin as the major transfers of value is very positive. Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, because I, I think it's 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 too big of a of a snowball to stop rolling yeah, into. But a, it, the tech, you can't. Uh, you know, the, you, it's like the things you can't unsee. The technology is yeah. there, yeah, and it's so much more efficient, and it's such an alternative to to, to to standard sort of monetary mechanisms. Yeah, I think it's just the the, the getting 
the 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 widespread usage of it that's the thing People and, and, and still, that's yes. you know they, they don't know really what it is and how they can utilize it it has to evolve and i think all of the yeah. currencies are evolving all of the you know the technology is evolving the the usage the 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 efficiency of the blockchains underpinning these cryptocurrencies yeah. you know they're evolving so um, and again everything's evolving at a furious rate yeah so, do you think that uh, that the the education part like even like real education like in schools things like that do you think that's that's wide uh, a, a lot broader in other countries than it is in the u.s no 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 i i, I mean i don't have direct experience but yeah. um you know i i think that um you know the u.s you know it's always a bad idea to um underestimate the u.s okay. in these things they may be slightly slow to sort of you know to get started but yeah they tend to catch up pretty quick so okay and i think this is such a um a, a massive opportunity for everyone that i think really once it's stabilized um but, but you know in california every all the kids are talking about cryptos they know how to program yeah, the kids are yeah. yeah yeah and especially the gamer kids yeah so, yeah. so they're way ahead so you know we'll yeah. be those are the guys that are going to be doing the education. Yeah, I didn't realize that. It, you know, when I when I first got into this, I just thought it was just a primarily U.S. thing. And yes, I got into it and realized it's not primarily it's US, global. It's primarily somewhere else. It's primarily non-U.S. Exactly, but yeah. it is a global phenomenon. Yeah, um, yeah. and that's why it's. Uh, I mean, it'll normalize. It'll. You know, there will be peaks and troughs, but um, you know, the 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 trend is up. Yeah, and I, I guess Silicon Valley. I didn't even real. I you know didn't put two and together in the beginning, but I guess Silicon Valley. They're really. Uh, it's a little bubble over there. You know? well, yeah, and again, it's a different view because Silicon Valley is much more of a traditional sort of VC environment. Mm -hmm. And different types of technologies come out of uh, um, Silicon Valley. In fact, Los Angeles and Santa Monica in particular, that's the sort of epicenter of uh, blockchain activity. Yeah. So it's funny how LA has yeah. become the, the hub for the blockchain in the US. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, uh, I've gone to a few things over there in LA. Do you know, do you know Stephen Mead? Name is a bell. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah, he does the the Beverly Hills uh, blockchain meetup. Over yeah, that's right. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, it's a friend of mine. Uh, uh, um, not Elizabeth, but um, Hannah on. Yes, at the, at the district. Yep. Down in yeah. So yeah, she has a phenomenal restaurant over there. Give her a little plug. Wonderful. Great. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> give her a little plug on that one. Um, and then uh, the the car world. So we, we we got in here. We immediately started talking. We were both at at Pebble Beach last yes. week. And uh, I didn't and make. It, I made it as far as uh, Laguna Seca, but I, I think Pebble Beach was. Um, um, I think we were busy on our way home at that point. But it's you know. Um, yeah. I try again. One has to sort of you know get up there. It's such a historic race circuit, and there yeah. were, and there's some of the most fantastic machinery there. Yeah. Uh, and and I see, you know, the, the, I've, I've heard of a couple of blockchain type things like uh, Ven, Vincoin, yeah, uh, some other things, and I see, you know, verifiable type, yes, you know, in in, in the first thing that came to my mind was the uh, the. Uh, Ferrari registry. Absolutely. Right? Just again, That's because something that yeah. should be blockchain. Well, any, anything of whether, whether it's art or Rolex watches or Ferraris, yes. things where you need to be able to prove something with that, mm -hmm. that layer of truth, that layer of trust. That's where the blockchain really comes in. So it, it, it's touching every part of our lives. It even, is. Even motor racing. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and we were, we were talking about, you know, that, uh, uh, so Laguna Seca. Yes. Is, is a racetrack. And, the Concord Elegance yes. is obviously a show. Now, yes. do you know how the connection is there? No, no. Uh, okay, so this is a plug for me, yes. kids. This is, uh, <laughs> if you have Amazon Prime, there's a documentary oh, on there wow. called Racing Through the Forest. Check it out. Um, I was actually introduced to the Pebble Beach Road Races through Fan a friend of mine. Fantastic. His dad raced in the last race. Yeah. And um, that started in 1950 it was a road race that uh sam sam morris's son and a guy named sterling edwards yes got together and shell cavalli and they all got together and they decided to put a race in the 17 mile drive yeah. to uh spark a little interest in selling homes yes. in in pebble beach yes so <laughs> 1950 was the first Pebble Beach road race. Yep. Well, they needed something to keep people going during yep. that, that little weekend. Yep. So they said, hey, let's do a car show. Yes. And that's how now the, the it's the sort of world famous. You know, the the biggest Pebble car Beach. show in the world, right? It is. 
Well, in 1956, a guy got killed yeah. on the 17-mile drive in that race. Yes. And so they had to stop the race because it was just too dangerous. They're racing an inch away from trees, doing 100 miles an hour, and those trees don't move. No, you no, know, no, they're not forgiving. Know. Yeah. Yeah, and especially a little aluminum car. Yes. Not going to move that tree. So they went to the Army Corps of Engineers. Yes. And they bought a piece of land. Called Laguna Seca. Oh, outside. I see. Fantastic. That's how that. And the first race wow. was called the uh, Pebble Beach Road Races. Um, yes. In, in name only, but it was still amazing. Yeah. So they went and they, they created a body called Scramp. Yeah, which is the. Um, um, yeah, I know what you mean. It's the. Uh, yeah, it's the. Um, yeah. S- uh, scramp S C R M B something like S- uh, it's I, not um and I can't remember I southern the, the, uh, yeah I, I remember reading it at the top yes yeah yeah all so these scramp, senior moments and, we're having here that yeah was the yes. governing body for yes. that and they because they needed that money to come in every year yes you know exactly. that was a big chunk of money that came in uh you know they, they still had golf yes you know but that uh, that weekend was really big for everything and they kept. They kept obviously the concord going. Yeah, and uh, and then we now have all the auctions. So we have the car auctions. We have oh, the you know, yeah. and it's fantastic going to the Meekum auction. Um, Meekum, just, just walking around rows and rows of Ferraris and yeah. Lamborghinis, just uh, you know, just um, Gooding and uh, and and RM. Do you, yeah, do you go to the RM auction? No, no, no. I didn't. I think we stand outside, yeah. listening in, just to see how many yeah. millions of dollars this particular <laughs> f- sort of Maserati is being sold for. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as we're sort of chomping on our ice cream, and yeah. actually, you know, the great thing about that is the um, the free um, uh, there's a sort of a clam chowder. So if you go down the pier, then all of these restaurants, oh, they're all fish restaurants. Oh, it, it, yeah, the Fisherman's Wharf, exactly. And, and there's I, about ten restaurants selling clam chowders, yes. and you can taste um, a clam chowder from each one of those. So by the time you get to the end of the wharf, you are you stuffed nice, with free clam nice, chowder. Uh, nice day of yeah. clam chowder. Man, on top of the racing, so you've got the car fumes, yeah. the the petroleum, the oil, and the clam chowder. You know, what more would you could you possibly oh, hope I for? Know, I know. Did you did you get a chance to go to uh, any of the parties like uh, the Jet Center party? No, no, <laughs> no. I was. That's quite a ticket. Well, I think to, we were uh, busy trying to negotiate with the guys at you know at the local <laughs> extended stay to not charge us seven hundred and fifty dollars for one night. That's uh, that's the the Motel Six. Yeah, there's yeah. there's you know every one of them. You know, normal rates ninety five dollars. Yeah. Car week. Yeah, make it a thousand. Yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> exactly. Right? Let's gouge them. I mean, if they're yes. coming down here in their Ferrari, yeah. they can afford that, but they don't realize that not everyone owns a Ferrari. Yeah. You know? Precisely. You know, yeah. I think we camped the previous year, you know, and that was a little bit... At, okay. at Laguna Seca? <laughs> yeah. It's still a little yeah. bit chilly in the morning, actually. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I have a buddy that actually does that every year. He's yeah. Uh, He's right over here, and he he uh, he goes. I mean, I'm feeling cold, and I'm just thinking about queuing for the showers, just to you know, yeah. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> like, well, we'll do the hotel thing next year, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you can actually uh, go in with some people and get a house. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a little you bit. Know? That's too. I think probably just you know, I might try the camping thing again, actually. But you know, okay. next time we'll bring a sweater. Yeah, it, it, I forgot that when I when I when I took off, you know, it was ninety five here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna be hotter up there. Oh my god, yeah, I got up there. It was fifty nine degrees the night I pulled in. Yes, and didn't bring a jacket. No, no, no. <laughs> and you, I yeah. And to this day, you remember it, yeah. Yeah. So next, yeah, I always forget. But um, so you're 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 you you like the races? What's your what's your favorite cars? Um, I I don't know. I think probably the Cobras. I've always been a real Fascinating! I just love the this the you know the AC Cobras the you know the two eight nines um you know the big box the big four fifty sevens four twenty seven um yeah. and um just the, you know the big V eights because obviously you know coming from England uh, very few V eights I mean if you hear the sound of a V eight you you recognise it yeah. over here obviously every car is a V eight pretty much yeah so <clears throat> just the V I've never been a real sort of Ferrari guy but there's some really um you know the old Porsches um. As I said, you know the the the, the Ferraris, the, the Maseratis, and the big American muscles, the you know the stink, the the, the Corvettes, and um, so I just you know love all of it. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking about the Jags too, because you know Jags, a, you know, absolutely very big. Uh, uh, you know, and, and I'm glad that they they they're, they're going back. I didn't see that many Jags this year. I think I, I think I saw yeah. one or two. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, there's, I mean, Laguna Seca is great because you can walk 
everywhere and you have to jump out the way when this stream of cars comes off the track yeah i mean that's motor racing <laughs> yes. you know you're not locked out yeah, of the pits. the pits yeah exactly yeah. and you're there and you have to keep your wits about it. and you can talk to the drivers and mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of motor racing circuits where you know you have to have special pit passes and uh, yeah. you know that's 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 no fun really no no and you get to and, and walking through there i mean if you have any kind of uh, uh knowledge of, of exactly. motor racing you you'll want to cross a couple of those drivers that and, you and saw when you were a kid. Exactly, exactly. And there are drivers there that have been racing for 30, 40 years, yeah. you know, that are real heroes, you know, that, that have grown up with, as I was saying, the, the, you know, I was talking to uh, one of the guys who, who worked with Carol Shelby and all these names and, yeah. you know, these guys here, they were part of that history, part of yeah. the fabric of uh, the automotive, uh, you know, historical well, then, world. You know, you 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 have you have the the greatest driver ever, uh, Sterling Moss, Sir, Sir Sterling, Sterling Moss. Moss. Yes, yes, you know. So um, I, I've I've met him a few times. In fact, I, I got his interview for my documentary. Racing oh, the forest, I must, which I, which is the first thing I will be, you know, when I finish flicking through everything at Netflix. You know, that's that's exactly what I'll be. Amazon uh, Prime. Amazon Prime. There Amazon you are. Prime. If ever there right. was a, a a need to sign up for Amazon Prime, this is it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because yes. you can rent it. Um, I think I, 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 I'm going to buy every copy. Forget about renting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's uh, I think it's like five five nine four ninety nine or five ninety nine to buy it. I would pay yeah. ten times that. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then uh, Jackie Stewart, my first time to meet Jackie Stewart. Yes. I was walking in, and I got to tell this story because it's the greatest story. I've told a couple of people this, right? Um, so that's the quail. Have you been to the quail yet? No. No? Oh, my God. That's Clearly, I've led a very sheltered life here, actually. Oh, you got to go to the quail. You got to figure out a way to get in because it's a, that's another pretty pricey ticket. Yes. Um, I think they started like $4.99 or something. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So... Um, I had a friend of mine that, that uh, we were doing a little show, so we got, you know, a buddy yes. to a buddy, got another wristband. Did you see the wristbands this year? Wasn't that a trip? Yeah, the, yeah. The we new wristband way to get into the, stuff? Yeah, we go, we, yeah, we it's managed. It's like a Chinese uh, finger, finger. Yeah, oh, that thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you yes. put on, you yes. can't get it off. Yes, It's right, not coming yeah. off, man. Yeah. Uh, with hot scissors, and it's a, you know, yeah. So, um, anyway, so we, I was at the quail. Yeah. And there's a few places to get in, but they have very tight security. Yes. And uh, there was a, a, next to the uh, the clubhouse, there's, it's the golf course. Yes. And there's next to the golf course, there's a clubhouse. And so there was a gate there to get in. And there was this young guy. Yep. That uh, obviously not very smart. <laughs> and Jay Leno is right in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, I had just walked out. And Jay Leno's walking in right in front of me. He didn't have a wrist, wrist brand. On. Yes. He got turned away. Uh, okay, faux pas. Yeah. Uh, this this is the guy that is now no was. longer working at the uh, car place. Yes. I was like, this guy is yeah. so fired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and his family's fired. And the next, he's fired for oh, the yeah. next three generations. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. yeah, he can't be fired enough. Yeah. He's not allowed near any cars no. ever. Yeah. He got turned away, and his Jay's handler was like, I am so sorry, blah, blah, blah. But they, he wouldn't let him He in. must have thought it was quite funny, actually, because you know he probably just needed to make one he phone call. He didn't look happy. Really? He, he wasn't throwing a fit. No. You know, he had class about him. Yeah. Do but you know no, who I was, am? <laughs> yes. I would have thrown yeah. that one if I was Jay. I would have thrown that one out. Don't yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you not recognize this? So uh, that that was that was kind of funny. But then when I rest, rest of the walk through the gate, there's Sir Jackie Stewart. Yes, with his cap. There. I'm sure. Yes. At, yes. Matching cap yeah. with his pants. Tartan pants and tartan yes. pants. Yeah. And uh, so I stood next to him, got a little little snap next yes. to, standing next to him. So that was really. But those neat. guys, I mean, the, the history. If you look back in the 50s and 60s when they were racing, uh, you know, and it was. Dangerous as hell. It was dangerous. Oh, yeah. fact, I think it was. Um, he was like a rock star too. Exactly. Yeah. You know, all, all the chicks dug him. Yeah. You know. And was it? I think was it Jackie Stewart who was um, very much at the forefront of um, motor racing safety. So yes. Yeah, that was him. He that was, was exactly. very so he was very pro safety guy. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, no, because I remember you know um, all of the, you know the, the, the Nicky Lauda races and James Hunt and oh, those yeah. when I was a kid those those were the sort of superheroes yeah the Formula One guys absolutely so yeah. uh, you know and yeah. uh, Nigel Mansell and all, yeah you know, all, the, yes. all those guys yeah yeah oh, you ever been you ever been to Monaco yeah 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 you have yeah oh I've a never couple been there tell me about that man a couple of years ago so I was on a friend's boat um, and we oh, were you about, on a boat too yeah yeah we were about two or three boats Come in from on. one of the chicanes wow um, all I would say was absolutely fascinating the most amazing sort of weekend of parties yeah um but and girls but rather loud yeah 
I mean, and you're two boats away from the chicane. I mean, really loud. I mean, yeah, the F ones are like to the like, point where your ears like are bleeding uh, almost. <clears throat> yeah, it's and you know, but this, but fantastic. The whole the whole atmosphere was, uh, you know, was was you know, fa- fant- astonishing. Just the whole, the island was the party. Oh yeah, man! I uh, I I would love to absolutely love and to going go up to, to the Monica. casino at Monte Carlo. And thinking, oh yeah, did you, you know, go there? Yeah, and I didn't. You know, just walked outside, just thinking, this yeah. is where James Bond passes yeah. Aston Martin and. You know, yes. in Casino Royale, and just you know, just the, I love the history of the place. Oh man, Have you, did you get to drive on that? On that? Uh, no, no, we no? didn't. I mean, I, 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 I flew in, so uh, did I didn't you? have a car. But I, okay. a couple of friends drove up, and uh, they, right. you know, screaming through the tunnels on maximum volume. You know. Yeah. So uh, you, you're probably f- very familiar with uh, with uh, Phil Hill, is it the first American that raced uh, one, first American to win F1? Oh right. Well, yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, we. Yeah. I mean. I know the name again, but but my 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 yeah historical knowledge is lacking. Sadly, so he he won the very first Pebble Beach Road Race. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. there's there's so much so much to learn. This is why it's you know it's life fun. is so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, and, and it's it you know and then Carol Shelby won the last race. Exactly. Yes. You know, so there was a lot of uh, these these guys that were. Uh, I love the tension with Henry Ford and Enzo Ferrari, and that's, you know, this, yeah. you know, that, that. I think that they're the guys are building a, a building. A, Writing a documentary about that as well, or filming yeah. a documentary about the sort of Ferrari Ford. There has been, yeah, a few. You know, uh, you know, we got uh, Adam Carolla, who's another podcast yes. guy. You know, he's he did the Twenty Four Hours War. Yes, Twenty Four. Yeah, yeah, and that that's I right. Have, and th- yeah, and yeah. Le Mans as well. Another one of my favorite tracks. You know, I've been there a few times. Which uh, one? L- Le Mans. Oh, Le Mans. yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's just, yeah. you know, that is You've just, been there a few times, huh? Yeah, that's just heavy. Yeah. The drive up, because when I was lived in England, you drive the, 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 the drive from, I lived in Kent, so it would be a hop over the channel and you drive up through France and, you know, you're there and um, it's just fantastic. The whole atmosphere in Le Mans is just, yeah. you know, the 24-hour racing, the noise, the, the you know, the, the sounds, everything. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I have a buddy that, that raced. He won his class in, uh, I think it was 80, 82 I think it was 82, yeah. The, um, the, oh, I forget what, what it's called, class five or, um, but he was in a, in a, in a, in a Krimmer Porsche. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's, I mean, that's hard. That's such a hard race. I mean, it's just the amount of, you know, it, 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 the energy it takes just to sort of, you know, do one lap, let alone <laughs> 24 hours. I mean, God, those guys are super yes. heroes, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you stay awake for the entire thing? Were you? No, I think so. You, yeah, you sort of drift in and out. You sort of cat nap here and there. Yeah. Um, but right. uh, yeah, you, you you don't sleep exactly. I mean, that's um, you yeah. Know, you, you don't go to Le Mans. You might you might sort of overdose on corn dogs or something and just sort of you know <laughs> doze off in a sugar coma. But but that's you know that's about the extent of it. <laughs> wow. Okay. So um, and then did, have you been to any F one races out here? Like uh, no, no, no. But I want to do. Uh, I think Long Beach is next, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's, that's coming uh, up quite soon. So I want to um, see that. Yeah, there's Long Beach. Um, there was something else, um, and then Indy. Oh, you 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 go to Indy? No, no, no. Again, but I'm, there's there's all of this. I've just got this whole list of stuff that I want to go and do. Yeah. You know, I want to go and do. So, and that's a that's another nightmare. Um, as I I've I've been to Indy twice, and uh, the morning of the race, going from hotel where the hotels are downtown, yes. to that road that goes. Oh my God. Leave at three in the morning. Best to walk, is it? Yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, walk. Yeah. It's like I don't know. It's like five or seven miles, something like that. But yeah, yeah walk it because <laughs> you're not gonna. Yeah. It's a it's a nightmare to drive. But I've always gone with a with a lot of equipment because I've been filming. There. Of course. So you, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got my truck, and you know, I'm like, oh, dude, <laughs> that's it's right. A, yeah. It's just a I'll see you in about four hours. Yeah. Yeah. I left a camera there one day. I was at, uh, I was exhausted. I yes. had my camera with me. And uh, it was uh, like it was a it was a Saturday. Yes, the Saturday before the race, and I had been walking and taking all these pictures and all this video of all the drivers. And, you know, it was like from here to here, you know, you know, with the with the camera, in. and uh, my back was killing me. And I sat down on this thing, oh, put, put the camera my down, camera Shh, next to me, damn. yeah, and I was just out of it. And I stood up and walked away, and two minutes later, I'm like, oh my god! I ran back. Of course, it was gone. Yeah, but so that uh, that was a. Nice couple of thousand dollars <laughs> to somebody, yeah. yes, yeah. Exactly. But um, and if you're out there, <laughs> yeah, it's you know you. who you yeah. are. You know who you are. Exactly. You know who you yes. are. Damn it. Yeah. Do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, well, cool, man. Well, I'm. Uh, uh, 
I'm, I'm glad we got to do this. So we're we're going to obviously put up a lot of links to yes, Quantum thank you. Yeah. RE. Yes. Um, what are there, are you, are, where else can, can they find you? That's, lots I think, of social media? Yeah, I mean, we're all, we're all over um, you know, the usual sort of social media yeah. suspects. Um, but really, no, just go to the website, quantumre.com. Yeah. Um, you guys pretty friendly when it comes to people asking you questions? Yeah, no, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, 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 right. we, we're, we're really excited about what we're doing. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, we love questions. We have a Telegram channel, um, which is a very sort of interactive channel okay. if people have questions there's you know there's twitter so that there's lots of sort of you know two-way communication going on so, okay, so we're we're absolutely committed to uh you know answering whatever questions people have okay and that's quantum re.com yes right? quantum quantum we spelt it without the u q u a n t m r e dot com oh, quantum <laughs> yeah quantum mm. yes quantum. i know it's yeah, yeah it's uh, it looks uh, you know it's um was that just a typo and you were like no we <laughs> so meant to we'll do that it. no it's because we <laughs> it's um who was it? I think Thomas, um, not Thomas Beckett. Um, who wrote um, uh, the play um, Waiting for Godot? It was Samuel Beckett. Oh, okay. And yeah. Samuel Beckett, someone, Samuel Beckett. it's a play in two acts. And someone said, why did you make it two acts? And so Samuel Beckett says, because three would have been too many and one would have been not enough. So quantum with the U would have been too slightly many, many too long. Too many letters. Too many letters. And if we would have taken and you're here in America, we're lazy. Well, and, and we exactly. It's too many U's. I mean, yeah. use, give the U to someone else who has a better use for it. Yes. And we're not playing Scrabble here. Exactly. So. You know, you know, Scrabble is not the event. Quantum RE, that's the event. Get your mind off Scrabble. Just, you know. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, well, um, yeah, quantumre.com. And uh, fantastic. we get these these coins are, are going going to be coming up really quick. Well, yeah, and, we'll just, uh, just join up and we'll keep you posted on what we're yeah. doing. And if you want to get involved, we'll, we'll tell you. We'd love to have you involved and tell you how. Awesome. All right, man. It's Good been talking a pleasure. with you. Thank you very much. It's been yeah, just thank you, so man. enjoyable. Well, you're going to have to have me on your show now. Yes, of course. Right? With, with, without question. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Good talk, man. Wonderful. Thanks very much. All right.